afternoon. Folks may be seated. Next matter we have is docket number PUC 1589, Bruce Taylor versus Public Utilities Commission. And I'd ask counsel at this point to uh, stand, remain where you're standing, make sure you have a microphone, uh, indicate who you're representing. And after that, uh, for those of you who are going to be arguing, and after that, we'll proceed with the um, argument. Mr. Laughlin. Your Honor, Bruce McLaughlin for Appellants, Dr. Taylor, and Food and Water Watch. Okay. Jordan McCollman for uh, Appellee Maine Public Utilities Commission. Uh, James Costello, attorney for uh, Freiburg Water Company, the appellee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. And uh, Mr. McLaughlin, at this point, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. If this decision is upheld by the PUC, is upheld. Nestle Waters of North America will have exclusive control and use of Freiburg's backup well for up to 45 years. It will have, Nestle will have the right to extract directly from the Freiburg aquifer 603,000 gallons every day of that 45 years. The price structure of the contract incentivizes Nestle to maximize its withdrawals effectively paying less than any of the residents of Freiburg for the water. And it's a virtual certainty that on any day that Nestle withdraws 603,000 gallons, on that day, the sustainable limit for commercial extractions from the aquifer will be exceeded. We know this because 603,000 gallons is the limit, and there are two other commercial extractors one of which is authorized to withdraw 450,000 gallons each day. Despite this risk to the public resource, Freiburg's right to suspend Nestle's withdrawal will be highly restricted, according to a set of convoluted terms that uh, only a team of multinational corporate lawyers can appreciate or understand. Freiburg Water Company and the Commission struggled for over a year to figure out how this contract fits into the regulatory scheme. Ultimately, the hearing examiner correctly concluded the contract doesn't even fit into Freiburg Water Company's legislative charter, which grants limited authority to convey a supply of pure water to the village of Freiburg and vicinity. Freiburg has such a system for conveying pure water to the people of Freiburg, but Nestle wants no part of it. Nestle has contracted to bypass that system and therefore the charter purpose by taking untreated, untested water directly from the aquifer into its tanker trucks for shipping outside Freiburg's service territory to be resold and consumed around the world. The alternate commissioners who came into the case 10 to 12 months after the final hearing was held disagreed with the hearing examiner interpreting the phrase pure water according to a 19th century understanding of contamination. Even if this originalist theory of charter interpretation is upheld, the decision must be vacated because the, con the contract is contrary to the public interest. As this court has held, the right to use water for domestic purposes is primary. The hearing examiner correctly concluded the contract impermissibly treats the public service interest as secondary. Mr. McLaughlin, as secondary. Mr. McLaughlin yes, the green light is on, so I'm free to ask you questions. It seems to me you are more interested in the amount of water than the price of the water. And isn't really that a question for the legislature and the natural resources as a joint committee? The PUC is only concerned with the pricing and not with, and you may have some legitimate questions about state policy towards the use of our water, our natural resources, but did the PUC really, can they control that? Isn't that something the legislature's got to do? The PUC has certainly uh, regulatory authority to make sure that the public interest is protected in, in, the, in the public resource. But does, it, that's does, does it have the authority to limit the amount of water that a company can can uh, use from an aquifer or any other natural resource of water in the state of Maine? I'm not sure whether the PUC can set a, a uh, well, that's what, that's what you're seeing gallon to limit. That seems what it what can do is determine whether or not Freiburg Water Company has acted prudently here in the public interest to avoid a contract 
that would threaten that. But you seem more concerned with the quantity than, and that may be a legitimate concern, but PUC cannot limit how much water a particular entity I, is uh, giving out to companies? I don't believe the PUC would have to limit the daily take specifically in order to, to so what uh, are you asking reject us, this contract. So what are you asking us to do today? We're asking that the PUC reject the contract because it does not protect Freiburg Water Company's primary rights, the public primary rights in this well and in the act. So if we do that, Mr. McLaughlin, the original lease that was put in place in 1997 would stay in place until the parties to that lease reach a different agreement. True? That's my understanding, Your Honor. And does the 1997 lease have any kind of a daily limitation on the amount of water that could be taken? No, but it unambiguously states that the public interest is primary and that Freiburg Water Company can terminate or suspend uh, Nestle's extractions at any time for practically any reason. But the PUC found that the current, the contract that's under question here, did in fact place the public interest as the primor, primary um, interest of the contract, which I understand you disagree with, but that is a finding by the PUC. I'm not sure that the PUC actually made that finding, but if they did, it was not, it's not supported by substantial evidence in the record, Your Honor. Well, the substantial evidence in the record is, um, and, and I think one of the things that you're concerned about is that this gives Nestle sole right to use um, well number one. Fair? Yes, Your Honor. And your concern is that by dire having direct access to the aquifer to a bulk water consumer, it is putting the rights of the people who rely on this water at risk. Fair? I, I would rephrase that if I could to say that not but not by nature of having direct access is the is the um, public right threatened. It's the exclusive control of that access. I'd also argue that the direct access is contrary to the charter, but that's a different issue. Was there any involvement by any state environmental regulatory agency in this proceeding? Is there a charter? Was there any involvement by a, an environmentally, by environmental regulatory agency? No, Your Honor. Should that be required in these kinds of cases where water is now being recognized as a natural resource, a national resource and not just a local resource? I would not disagree with that, Your Honor. But it was, it's not required by the statute, and it was not done here. Should we read that into the regulatory agency's obligation? The regulatory agency, I, I, I would invite the court to ask the regulatory agency to take its, its uh, obligation to protect the public interest more seriously, and if, if uh, consulting with an environmental agency would assist that, absolutely. Are you, are you arguing that giving Nestle Waters exclusive right to well number one somehow prevents uh, the Freiburg Water Company from satisfying its charter um, obligation to provide a supply of pure water uh, to the village of Freiburg and vicinity? We are arguing that there is a risk of that, Your Honor. There's a risk. And how do we quantify the risk? Or how do we, if there's, is would any risk satisfy or is it a likely risk? If the fiber guard, if the company's primary rights were protected by having unfettered, unquestioned access when it's appropriate in Freiburg Water Company's own determination in the public interest, that would be sufficient. But that's not what we have here. But if there is plenty of water, even with the exception of well number one, to always provide the water to the town of Freiburg and vicinity, there is no risk. But if they take 603 gallons on any given day, <coughs> The sustainability of that aquifer is almost certain. You mean 603,000 gallons? I'm sorry? How, how many gallons a day? 603,000. So, Mr. McLaughlin, none of your clients are actually um, customers of the Freiburg Water Company. True? I believe that's true, Your Honor. So if none of the actual customers of the Freiburg Water Company are concerned about this contract, should we? <clears throat> Well, we could take a show of hands here, Your Honor, but um, 
there, the public did did speak at a public forum in Freiburg, and there was plenty of uh, public customer comment negative to the contract there. Um, and there were other interveners who are public customers who did not end up in the appellate process. Looking at, looking at the, the PUC's uh, obligation um, at, regarding rates and prices here, as I understand it, uh, the contract uh, guarantees a certain amount of um, uh, water can be removed and that Nestle must pay the tariff rate for those funds, for those uh, waters. Correct. Uh, but should they take out less than what the amount was uh, specified at, at the outset, they still pay the full amount, so they could end up actually paying more than the tariff rate. It, that is certainly possible, but Nestle... They, they never pay less, was going to be my next question. I'm sorry? They would never pay less than the tariff rate. Well, they would never pay less than the tariff rate that they are given, but because they would be buying more water maximizing their take most likely as an economic actor, they're going to be paying lower rates on the margin in, in the, the, the multiple block rate structure than, than your normal resident. Could, could you pay. point out where in the statute that the PUC, one of the standards it has to use is the best interest of the state or, or the interest of, of resources, other than considering the price that's being charged for customers? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Yeah, could you point out where in the statute the PUC is obligated to consider the state's interest in protecting its water supply? I believe in some of the statutory provisions there is. Can you tell me where it says that? I mean, that's really the basis of your argument, isn't it? Maybe on rebuttal you'll be able to point that out. Yes, Your Honor, and also in in the plenty of uh, PUC decisions, they refer to their own standards for reviewing those reviewing those statutory provisions. But that has to do with reasonableness of the price and the relationship to its customers. When when we're talking about setting rates, but that's right. not what we're talking about here. We don't have a service customer who's obligate who has a right to have the tariff rates. This is a negotiated contract with a price that the parties chose to be the tariff rates. There's nothing about this contract that dictates tariff rates. Can, can I circle you back to, before your time is up, to the question that was raised at the beginning, which is, um, I'm guessing that you and your clients and perhaps a number of people in the room are concerned about depletion of natural resources. Yes, the water resources of the state. Is it the PUCs? Agenda, its charter, its obligation to protect the natural resources of the state, or would that fall under the auspices of another agency? Not per se, Your Honor, and it would fall under the auspices of another agency, but it's certainly within the PUC's auspices to make sure that Freiburg Water Company doesn't give away the store. Mr. McLaughlin, when you, uh, let me take you up on that. What difference does it make? if Nestle makes a boatload of money on the water it is able to buy from Freiburg Water Company. Should we be concerned with that at all? Not per se, Your Honor, but the question is whether or not Freiburg Water Company has acted prudently in the best interest of the public but in giving away those. Well, when you say giving away, should Freiburg Water have made a better deal with Nestle so that the people who are actually getting water from Freiburg pay less in water? Would you then not be here? No, Your Honor, if, if the threat was still there for the volume that could be taken without protection. And um, our, our argument is that Freiburg Water Company has done no due diligence in its negotiations with, with um, Nestle. But what do, I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry to press you on this, but <clears throat> if Freiburg Water Company left money on the table, did not get the best possible price you could get from Nestle, what does that have to do with the amount of water being taken out of the ground? It has to do with the ability of Freiburg Water Company to negotiate in the best interest of the residents. I, I'm not saying that price per se, although under Section 1101 of the statute, which governs sale or lease of, of useful property, it is required that value of the property being sold or leased be considered, and I would reference uh, the Kittery Electric Light Case 219A Second 728, Your Honor, on that point. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. McCollum. I think I've broken your microphone, Your Honor.
May it please the Court. This case is about whether the Commission properly approved a contract between Nestle Waters of North America and the Freiburg Water Company. The statutory basis for this approval, or put another way, the Commission's authority to approve or deny the contract in the first instance lies in the conveyance by lease of certain utility property to Nestle that enables Nestle to draw water from the aquifer beneath Freiburg. Section 1101 of Title 35A of the Maine Revised Statutes governs such conveyances. Section 1101 requires that a utility obtain authorization from the Commission before it may sell, lease, assign, mortgage, or otherwise dispose or encumber the whole or part of its property that is necessary or useful in the performance of its duties to the public. Section 1101 does not, however, mandate a standard governing the grant of such authorization. The determination of such a standard is one that lies firmly within the purview of the Commission, the agency charged by the legislature with the effectuation of the legislature's will as expressed by the statute. This Court has consistently afforded substantial deference to decisions of this nature made by the Commission. In this instance, the standard the Commission applied to the conveyance under Section 1101, conveyance at issue in this case, whether the con- is whether the conveyance would result in a net harm to ratepayers. This is a standard often used by the Commission to determine whether acts by utilities are in the public interest. Here, the record clearly reflects not only a lack of harm to ratepayers, but also a significant benefit. Accordingly, the Commission properly and reasonably approved the lease contract between Nesley and Freiburg Water. I'm happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Can I ask a reference to uh, net harm to to ratepayers? Yes, Your Honor. That's the standard? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, if, hypothetically, Nesley Waters took out sufficient water to substantially reduce or destroy the resources of the aquifer, the ratepayers would pay a lot more money to get water, wouldn't they? In that hypothetical... Or go go without? In in that hypothetical... Hypothetical. In that hypothetical, Your Honor, I I, I wouldn't disagree with you. But the contract has provisions in it, both in its its language as presented and as as amended by the Commission, to guard against Nesley's ability to have unfettered drawdown of the aquifer. That, that's subject to, to, to limitations in the contract. It's also subject to monitoring by the Commission and Freiburg Water Company. Freiburg Water Company, if it senses that there is a, a danger to the aquifer, reasonably believes that that is so, can curtail Nesley's draw of the water. The Commission can open an investigation and investigate whether or not Nesley is drawing down the aquifer below a sustainable level. So um, respectfully, Your Honor, I disagree with the premise of your hypothetical. One of the issues in the case is whether the Freiburg Water Company has the legal authority to sell water to a company such as Nestle. And that goes back to the scope of the charter uh, that the water company has. And I'm looking at page 124 of the appendix. That indicates that the Freiburg Water Company is authorized to convey water to the village of Freiburg and vicinity. And one of the arguments here is that uh, I suppose it might be that vicinity means nothing, or that the water is being uh, transferred over to Nestle, and then Nestle can do what it wants with that water. If that's the case, doesn't that really read into non-existence uh, that geographical uh, limitation of a vicinity? It really means nothing at that point if the water can go and be transferred internationally once it's in Nestle's hands. Well, two points, Your Honor. First, I, I, I would disagree. Uh, the water is being conveyed in the vicinity of Freiburg, actually in Freiburg, at the well to Nesley. But the, the larger point is that the, the, appellees, the appellants here and, and even the commission do not have standing, for lack of a better word, to challenge the corporate action here as being outside the charter. That would be a, an, an ultra vires challenge, which Maine Corporation law circumscribes and only allows challenges to corporate actions in, in very specific and limited circumstances. So the charter means nothing then? The restrictions that are in the charter are unenforceable? Well, I, I would put it this way, Your Honor. Um, if, if the Freiburg Water Company were engaging in an activity that was under the jurisdiction of the Commission to control or arbitrate, then the Commission would, I mean, circle follows, the Commission would have jurisdiction to, to step in, not as being inside or outside the charter, but as being 
as being inside or outside the, the statutory construct that regulates public utilities. So, for example, if the Freiburg Water Company, and let's leave aside the cost of trucking or piping, entered into a contract with the city of Flint to become its water source, would the PUC be in a position to say that that is not Freiburg and the vicinity? The, the PUC would not be in a position to challenge that action as being outside the corporate charter. The PUC would have to an analyze that action under the regulatory construct under Title 35A. What about, what about in the 35A, 11011? Uh, I think uh, the question I asked Mr. McLaughlin, and I think this is it, where it says under 1A that the PUC has to make sure that they perform its duties to the public. I think that's probably where the term comes in, the public interest. What does that mean? What is your job to make sure they're performing duties to the public? To make sure that the Freiburg Water Company is performing its duties as a public water utility. And that means that it is fulfilling its, its obligation under Title 35A as a, as a water utility <coughs> to provide water to the citizens of Freiburg. Does and that so, translate into a public interest, duties to the public? And what does that encompass? Does it encompass just the value or the price? Or does it also encompass the volume and the, and the depletion of natural resources in the state? Not in the, not in the state writ large, Your Honor. But I, I, would, I would argue that the... Public Utilities Commission, as a part of its obligation to ensure you know, safe, you know, reasonable, adequate service to utility customers, has an interest in making sure that for any given water utility that there is, that it is operating in a reasonable manner and ensuring that it has access to water for its citizens. Well, could someone come in, I think that's what they're saying here, that you're violating this duty to the public by giving away so much, even at a good price, by depleting the real water resources of the state. Except, Your Honor, in this instance, on this record, there is no, there is no unsustainable depletion taking place here. I mean, Freiburg Water has uh, a guaranteed or an obligated buy of 75 million gallons a year in an aquifer that can sustain a 220 million gallon a year drop. So if they were depleting the aquifer, you would have the right to say, we will not approve this contract because you are draining the aquifer and the source of the water. Yes, Your Honor. Does that mean then, uh, earlier on, there was a question about the mission of the Commission and whether it was just simply to regulate rates or to also oversee conservation? It sounds like you're saying conservation now, too. Not conservation per se, Your Honor. I'm okay. not in conservation only in the sense that the Commission has an, op an obligation to ensure that a utility is acting in a reasonable manner. And it depends on what the utility is. That would be a different. Uh, that would be different. For How about this utility? utility? This How utility? does it act in a reasonable manner? It acts in a reasonable manner by by doing what it can to protect the resource that lies under it and providing water to the citizens of Freiburg. And this contract allows just that. Mr. McCollum, I, I, rep I understand that you do not represent the Office of the Public Advocate, but I was struck by a statement in that individual's brief to us indicating that the OPA represents the, quote, pocketbook interests of utility customers. And I was wondering who represents water availability interests before the PUC? Water availability interests. Well, the utility would have absolutely have an interest in water availability. Because it wishes to maintain its supply for not only serving its customers, but also to maintaining a stream of income. I think it's, its overarching responsibility is to maintain a supply to its customers. If, if, if there was not a sustainable supply that could be used for purposes outside of supplying its customers, then the utility would not be able to engage in that activity. Here, that is just not the case. Does the fact that the uh, Freiburg Water Company's uh, corporate status kind of fell by the wayside for a while have any effect upon the validity of the contract that it purportedly entered into? Not under the commission standard under Section 1101, Your Honor. Because it's still a public utility? It is still a public utility. Thank you, Mr. Bullock. Thank you, Your Honor. Costello. That's it. Your Honors, good afternoon. You 
In this case, Your Honors, the commissioners got it right. The commissioners were looking at a replacement contract for a 1997 contract. This contract, we've been selling water, the company's been selling water since 1997, under a contract that was previously approved by the commission. This commission looked at that contract in the same way that the prior commission looked at it, applied the same standards, the no net harm standard, and approved the contract. There's ample support in the record for that decision. Well, one of the points that the, um, the appellants make is that, at least by the deposition testimony that was available to the commission, the, um, the individuals in charge of making this deal with Nestle did not seem to do any due diligence, as Mr. McLaughlin said, in terms of whether there would be another bulk water company that would be willing to spend more for this water or whether this was the top dollar that Nestle was willing to spend. Should we take any, should we pay any attention to that? Does that have anything to do with this case? Your Honor, the, the commission looked at the, that question as to whether it should apply a standard that looked at the fair market value of the, which is essentially what they're getting at, the fair market value of the water and what Nestle makes off the water, and determined that it did not, was not obligated to apply that standard and would not apply that standard. The commission applied the standard that it has traditionally applied in this case, which is the no net harm standard. The commission was not obligated by any statute to, in, in, to consider that particular standard. Now, I think ultimately, on this question of whether the, the company acted reasonably or not, I think it's actually told in the underlying contract that was ultimately approved by the commission. When the commission ultimately found that the contract not only benefited the customers and not only benefited them more so than the existing contract, but provided adequate safeguards to ensure and protect the water supply that it had and that there were adequate safeguards in place for the commission oversight and for other oversight of the town residents because there's, a, there's monthly reporting, quarterly reporting, annually reporting of the water aquifer. Um, so I think ultimately that is the best test of, that, of the commission, I mean of the company acting reasonably here. Um, if, if I could just go back to a question that was raised earlier about the commission's role here. The commission's role, like the company's role, was to ensure that they had, the customers have a fair deal in this, that the customers, the customers' interests are protected. The customers here, the, the commission's role here is to ensure that there is safe, adequate, reliable service at reasonable rates. There's no question here that the rates for the customers are benefited by this and that there were adequate safeguards in place under the terms of the contract in Mr. addition Cost to Mr. Costello, yes, even the representative, the representative for the PUC acknowledged that beyond the price, that there is a concern about whether or not it was depleting the resource, the aquifer. So it goes beyond just the price, doesn't it? Because under 11011, it makes reference to duties to the public. So what it isn't just price. Yes. They looked at ensuring that there would be safe and adequate uh, supply of water. Section 301 of the statute requires all utilities to provide uh, their utility services at just and reasonable rates and to supply those uh, to, to ensure that there's adequate supply. And the commission did that. The commission ensured that the resources of the... So you agree that if, it wouldn't, if the contract would deplete the aquifer, that the PUC could reject the contract? If, if there the, was a concern about it? The commission looked... If there was a concern about it, and the commission did look at that. The commission looked at whether there would be any detriments to the customers to ensure that the water supply for the customers I know, was the, adequate. The question my answer is if it would deplete the aquifer, the PUC could say we're not going to approve this contract. The commission could have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Thank you. Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Justice Jabbar, you, you pulled out the, I found the, the right words I, I was you. looking for, I was stretch, stretching for. Also, I would like to point out that we're not talking about public interest in an abstract sense. We're talking about the interest of the public that's being served 
by the utility. Well, what about in this case, there was evidence uh, presented to the PUC indicating a study indicating that this would not deplete the aquifer. Aren't, so can't they, based on that, find that well, it's not in a violation of the public interest? The, the study I think you're referring to shows that there's a sustainability limit of, of the 603,000 right. gallons per day, which which Nestle has been granted the contract right to do all on its own, despite that there's another uh, contractor out there already authorized to take 450,000 per day. So the patently right there, that is a risk. That is a threat. And Freiburg Water Company has no, does no monitoring of what these other commercial extractors are taking, doesn't plan to take any monitoring of that. Are, are you really pressing your argument that we should give less deference to the commission because of the particular background of the temporary commissioners or, uh, who are uh, who sat on this case? But there should be some sort of sliding scale depending on the level of experience and the type of background that the decision makers make in a particular case? I wouldn't put it that way. I, I wouldn't say it's a sliding scale. I think I don't, I don't think you're ever going to repeat the circumstances of this case. And, Let's and hope it, not. Yes. <laughs> We've got two uh, specially appointed alternate commissioners who have no commission experience, who came in after the record was closed, after um, there were two commissioners who presided over the whole thing. Basically, they have the, the commissioners have the same type of experiences we have, right? Exactly. You're not suggesting we don't have enough experience to decide the case, do you? <laughs> no, but I'm suggesting that you should not defer to them because you've got exactly their same experience, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the briefs and argument of counsel, and um, uh, we'll, we'll take the matter under advisement and decide the matter in due course. Uh, Mr. Costello, I understand this is your first appearance before the law court, and uh, as is our tradition, we will welcome you and uh, uh, co-counsel, the others of you who are at the tables, uh, back to uh, welcome you to appellate practice. We'll see you shortly. Court will be in recess. Where did they read that?